Welcome to the Liberian TV Network. Today we are the Ministry of Information where the Liberian National Police will be giving updates on their past work. Good afternoon to all. Mr. Minister, we want to thank you for the opportunity given us to use this platform to convey a message of importance and uh, security to the nation, uh, to all of the uh, members of the press, the general public, uh, officials of government here present. We want to take this time to just give you a brief update of some occurrences. I, I see the specific reference to 100 days achievement. Uh, that's one area I've always uh, run from because our job is so continuous that we get the ground running and we continue to run uh, just to ensure that the uh, state remains safe and that we can all go about our normal activities. We've been able over the last few months to significantly reduce uh, 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 violent crimes in most parts of the country. We've been able to try to increase police presence around the country. We've uh, strategized a lot of ways to have our structure more on an intel base connecting the necessary intelligence and data to inform the deployment of our new resources. We have uh, been working on policies and procedures, looking at revision of our administrative instructions and regulations to include more uh, gender sensitive uh, uh, aspects of it. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, work behind the scenes engaging with international partners who we are getting some positive responses uh, in connecting with us to be able to combat not just uh, uh, crimes here in Liberia, but transnational crime that affect uh, other countries beyond our borders. We are working with all other security agencies, looking at our vulnerability, the new resiliency of the state, to see how we can control our spillover risk factor to work out of the sub region and just ensuring that we increase uh, security in the nation. I would like to speak to one or two issues that are, are out there. One has to do with the uh, gruesome murder of uh, Mr. Mandan Nigo, which is going to occur uh, on April 14 at about 12 midnight. That, that's a sad event that we don't wish for anyone as part of our crime initiatives, I mean, this is something that is very disheartening. Uh, we consider it uh, one of those issues that have to be aggressively pursued and is being aggressively pursued as we speak. To date, we have arrested one of the key suspects in the murder who has admitted his involvement, and he has given us names of additional uh, suspects who were involved and the police are after them right now as we are ongoing with this uh, exchange here. So hopefully uh, within a day or two, we should have the rest of them in custody. But uh, beyond that, we are really concerned about the occurrences of crime in that area. So we are reviewing measures to put in place to try to curtail the situation and to keep people safe. Uh, these measures are being uh, reviewed by the operations department right now. We are looking at uh, what is the most feasible, apart from just uh, the command structure and the deployment of additional resources to that area. We're looking at uh, measures that could also include some form of a, a, a curfew uh, uh, for, for riders, because the target in that area is mainly motorcycle. Two days ago, someone came to my office and uh, informed us of what they had witnessed driving on the road. She was driving along the Somalia Drive around 11.30, and she saw these two motorcyclists with cutlasses going after another one uh, who, who was uh, running for uh, uh, his life. So they had to, to go after them with the vehicle to try to run them off the road, and that's how they were able to save that person. So the crime focus in our era is more motorcycle based, so we're looking at all of the measures to put in place to keep the riders and the passengers say as well, while we do more engagement in the community, more uh, proactive engagement to further deter the criminals. So we've uh, reinforced all of these hotspots 
uh, look at the, the uh, limited data, we've been able to co collect, and the data is giving us information as per the, the time and the occurrence of the crime, and it's on that basis that these decisions that the jury will be made within the next 24 hours, whatever the outcome will be, we will communicate with the general public as to what measures will be put in place to be able to support this initiative for the reduction of crime and the safety of the citizenry. We would like to caution uh, motorists, the uh, vehicle, uh, uh, vehicle registration, uh, license plate issue is one of those things that we are actively enforcing right now. And uh, the Minister of Transport will be speaking to you. I, I didn't even know he was on this stuff for the day, but he's here, so I'll leave this part up. But uh, we will be providing all the necessary support for that enforcement uh, as a joint collaborative effort in going after vehicles that are not registered. It's fully responsible enough as part of people's safety campaign, as part of your responsibility, as part of the privilege you enjoy to using the road that no one should have to run after you. It's only responsible enough that you go and register your vehicle. Uh, this is not something we should be begging you for, uh, but we are here asking you to please do so, so that it limits the interferences with you and the police officer. If you have your vehicle registered, the speakers are there, you have your license plate, there's absolutely no reason why the police officer should stop you. And I know there are many cases where people say, oh yes, we have some time our vehicle register, the police will still stop us. But sometimes challenge, challenge the process. Comply with them when they stop you. Take, take one step further. Reach to the professional step of the vision. Let us show reason as to why they engage you. But sometimes, I mean, people just don't even want to go there and they are they, there to work with the officer and sometimes uh, even encourage bribery. But I want to remind you, bribery is a two-way street, the giver and the receiver. So while we are, we are putting surveillance out there for our officers, it will also cover the giver as well. And if you're caught in that regard, you will be dealt with in accordance with the law. The, um, we've been uh, holding a lot of uh, stakeholder engagement at different levels uh, with, the, with the communities trying to build trust with the local community and address issues of insecurities in different communities. We uh, launched our community policing initiative uh, on Sunday in Tulita, Hong County, commemorating the day uh, uh, there from that uh, December 26 accident where safety tips were shared, additional information on the ongoing investigation that is not yet fully concluded because we keep getting more information about it uh, was revealed to us. So uh, that particular uh, uh, community, they had their own concerns. We are immediately beyond addressing the concerns of the community and we are, we are doing so with other communities who have got similar, not just the uh, accident concern, but other security issues as well. We will be reaching out to schools, we will be reaching out to, to churches, to mosques, at all levels of our community to connect with our people and be able to, to help build trust, which is one of those areas that uh, we, are, we are seriously lacking. We made some great efforts connecting with, internet, with international communities at different levels, different governments, there's been some commitments for training, uh, logistical support that we're looking, we're looking into. We began to distribute uniforms with our officers in different areas, and we're looking at upgrading some systems, processes, and procedures that are not just part of our operations, but part of our interaction with the public. And that includes the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, sorry, I lost it. It includes those services that people are always challenged about when they come to the police station. And the main area there is the police clearance. I would have to say it some other way, but then I just decided to put the phone back because there's a lot of contention in that area. But I can, I can assure you that we will clearly communicate to you what the cost will be and the new processes because now we're trying to take it online to limit human interferences which has caused a lot of the corruption around that process because people do not even know what the actual price is and they go there whoever they need, they're able to, to pay whatever they charge and then sometimes they don't even get it within the time frame that they're looking, they're looking at. So uh, as part of the update, 
renowned clearing of Latina at the Freeport, which contains a complete uh, uh, computer database that will host our fingers, our, our, our biometric uh, collection, that we will be able to, to better match uh, and reference people when they get into these clearances and then to be able to better store data and collect information from uh, uh, suspects that come within the uh, criminal justice system. Responding to uh, concerns from the communities around the uh, highway coming from Bumi to Monrovia, the police have launched a serious uh, operations in that area. We then monitor the movement of vehicles and trucks. The concerns are more about trucks coming from the western cluster pulling uh, 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 iron ore into the port of Monrovia. Residents have been complaining about the excessive speed and the, reckless, uh, 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 the recklessness of the driver. So the police have put up an observation for the last three days and it has been proven. Last night we had involved in exactly reckless driving, misuse of me, and reckless endangerment of the lives of, of other road users over eight, I think 84 trucks that were counted by the police. Out of the 84, we were able to pick up 15 and we are now communicating with the Western cluster that they will have to, to send in the particulars of the rest of, of the, the, the trucks for ticketing. We're giving them the, uh, a ticket of $200 each, and we're now discussing with them safety measures to avoid future recurrences because it, it's only a, a matter of time before we have a serious accident along that way that could claim the lives of a lot of citizens. So we, we, we are putting safety measures in place that will include escorting of the convoy through the city and uh, going forward that every time they come to Fall River, we get a police escort from there that brings them to the port and takes them back out of time. So those details have been worked up for for now. It, I think in, in four trucks have been ticketed $200 across the board as the first warning signal to them while we continue to discuss other safety protocols. Yesterday, a seven, a seven uh, a devil from the airfield is still being investigated, and that is the incident uh, involving the uh, death in the police cell. Uh, the suspect was found hanging uh, from the uh, uh, bars in the early morning hours uh, of uh, Sunday night. The, uh, the investigation uh, involves the, the suspects who were in the cell and all of the officers who were on duty. They've been turned over to the, the officer have been turned over to the professional standards division to look into their own procedures as to how that depot is being managed, how that case was being investigated to arrive at the charge that even put that, uh, put, uh, had a suspect under detention, and what actually happened in the cell. So when we get more information about that, we will come back and give you more additional briefings as per uh, that investigation. As far as it relates to Kinjoa, I announced the other day that, uh, that has been completed. It's been forwarded to the Minister of Justice. We recommended that since it's police officer involved shooting, the police have a civil oversight body, the civil oversight board, and we ask that that report be forwarded to the civil oversight board for further review because they're independent, it's an independent body outside of the police so that they can give it a second eye to verify because if we just come up with it, there will be a lot of contention say, oh, it's the same police officer investigating themselves. So we subjected ourselves to the civilian oversight board to give a final report on that, uh, uh, on that incident. The uh, criminal aspect of it is still being uh, under investigation. We are waiting for B Mountain to, to, to come and uh, fully represent it. Uh, give us a value of what was destroyed, and then we can continue from, from there. However, every opportunity I get, I continue to sympathize with the community for the loss of life, and we're looking forward to working closely with them so as to lead to rest those who were involved in that uh, fatal incident. I would like to rest here and uh, take questions. Uh, uh, four cases update. Four uh, uh, investigations that we, uh, we decided to reopen, and here, here, here is it. We, we we work for the people. We are we are the people. We we we, we are from amongst the people. We work for the people. 
were answerable to the people. So if the Liberian people whose uh, taxes from their hard earned money pay us have got some concerns, it's only fair enough that we answer. And the reason why we just made a decision to look into some of these cases from yesterday is because it borders on the integrity of the institution. It's not just about being a new sheriff trying to set up new rules or trying to feel like you're better than, than whoever was there in the past. If we're trying to build trust and legitimacy, it's only fair that we address some of those things that uh, help diminish the trust and legitimacy of the Liberian National Police. And some of these investigations that you're referencing that the public have been crying about, these are the very things that made people just not to trust the police again. So it's only fair that we look into them. We're not saying that the people are right. The people may just not be informed. There may be nothing in those cases. The previous investigation may be on the dollar. But it's our, it's our responsibility to uh, satisfy the concerns of the people and look into it, see if there's anything that may have been missed, and then uh, 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 get a proper closure of some of those issues. So we send a lot of messages out for people to come in with information on any of those cases. And we've been able to successfully conclude the firearm case, the one with the, the, uh, the uh, import of uh, the illegal import of firearms in the way that I made a big uh, a news around here. We've been able to charge three persons, one in absentia, because he, he, he's in the US, and we forwarded him uh, uh, to court. There are officers as well who were assisting in the investigation because they were part of the operation. But as the investigation progressed, these officers were somehow implicated in the investigation. So immediately, following our own policies and procedures, they were interdicted, turned over to the professional standards so that the professional standards can review all of their activities, their role, play in the exercise of their duties during that particular process. And then if criminality is established, because the reason why, I mean, in the first case, the criminal investigators noted a red flag. But our process has to go through the professional standard. So definitely, as soon as the professional standard conclude their investigation, there are going to be officers who will also be charged, not as a part of the importation of the illegal weapon, but for wrongful acts as police officers carried out on the scene during the exercise of their investigative duties. Because members of the community is complaining of things that they saw, things that they witnessed that were not a part of the weapons. We want to look for weapons. We didn't go to look for water heater, we didn't go to look for water pump, and a lot of other things. So there are claims that come up things that during this operation, the home of the uh, suspect was looted. So that part is being investigated and if criminality is established, those officers will be followed in the court and will inform you all. And that will bring a full closure to this particular matter. But that's where we are with the first one that we have, uh, we have, we have been able to complete. We are, we are looking into every last uh, case that caused some level of alarm here. I think the next one that's picking up a little bit of a steam, and we're not saying that anything is wrong, but there's just a lot of contradiction that's, that speak to some red flag, and it has to do with the death of Melvin Early. If you all remember the, e, the EPS officer whose death was uh, 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 allegedly a suicide, uh, that we're looking into. We've been able to, to see three contradictory reports uh, within the police. So we're just digging deeper to see if there's anything that may have been missed in our investigation. Here in all, I'm not making any assertions that this was not a suicide. I'm saying this was a red flag that we just need to look into further to be able to uh, substantiate what, what is uh, being reported there. We find an officer app. Coincidentally, I just, I just I got a message from the uh, developer of the app this morning. Uh, we've been communicating. We, we haven't uh, had a meeting in such a, a while. And he just requested a meeting today. I know we've been able to make the proper representation because Google took it down from the Play Store since it was bearing the name of the Liberian National Police and they did not have any authentication from the Liberian National Police. So we wrote Google 
and ask and give the full authorization that we have been placed back in the place too. So uh, when we meet, I'm sure he's going to give an update on where we are with the app, and then we'll make a, a further announcement. It's not just the app, there's also uh, a project as well uh, with uh, the uh, crash database where, I mean, uh, accidents can be reported in similar manner so as to collect the necessary data on accidents around the country. Thank you.